really funny what you did. Ready? Yep. Great. Once again, welcome. <clears throat> welcome to this story we're going to share with six pigtailed macaques. <laughs> um, I had the great pleasure of joy of being able to rescue from a fate of being sent for biophysical, bi biomedical research. Um, they had been at Hunter College in New York City in the psychology. Oops. Just a second. I muted you. Linda, you have to unmute yourself. Got it. For uh, 16 years, these six pigtailed macaques had been in uh, psychology uh, testing. And they, I'm going to show you in a few moments the pictures of the where they were kept for 16 years in these really tiny, tiny wire cages. And how I came into the picture is I received a phone call from uh, Carolyn Bosian, who was doing her PhD study at Hunter College. And I had met Carolyn when she was a keeper at in Washington, D.C., at the zoo where I gave a presentation uh, to vets and to uh, zookeepers. And she had asked me at the time, did I think it was a good idea for her to leave the Washington National Zoo where she was completely connected to the primates she was caring for and had a hard time thinking about leaving or should she do her PhD where she would be taken seriously and really could perhaps make some changes. So I recommended that she do the PhD and she did. So she called me saying these six macaques were about to be sent off for bio, biomedical research and everybody in the course was in the training was pretty upset about it. So I flew back to New York City and I had I, I had to meet with the head veterinarians um, from who were in charge of these macaques and they were uh, with them, Sloan Kettering. And I went underground under the streets of New York City and met these vets in their office, but it was like a Friday night before I could get there and they were about to leave. So they asked me if I would come back on the next week. So I flew to Toronto, did a weekend training in Toronto and then flew back. And I had the amazing experience of walking under the streets of New York City where 2000 research animals were kept. And one of the things, one of the reasons I've been fortunate to be invited <coughs> into places like this and into NIH is I don't go in there with a judgment. I accept what is with the concept that our thoughts are energy. And we can, I have had the experience that if I hold the potential, the possibility that there will be a change at some point, and we no longer will have to use animals for research, that's where I come from. It's the only way that I can possibly go into situations like that. So I was able on uh, Tuesday when I got there the next week to show them T-Touch on some of the mechanics that they had in research. And um, they were very impressed, so impressed that they wanted to actually set up the possibility for one of their, or of their lab uh, people to learn the work so that they could reduce the stress in the mechanics. So we worked with them over a period of time, but I got the permission to take these six macaques, which actually was a big deal since I'm not an organization of any kind, any size. So I want to show you some of these pictures. And Robin, you pulled up some of the videos, right? I don't even remember which videos they had, we had. Um, I have a, uh, I, it's about 10 minutes of video, short pieces. And I think it was from the day they arrived. And then there's some video with the kitten and things like that. So let's just show that because I have a lot of these beautiful detailed pictures, but I'd love to, to see those pictures. Okay, let me just, which external, okay, come on. Why are you not letting me move? Uh, okay, which, I have to find which external hard drive I have it on. So while you're looking, 
Um, Denise Lynch, which is on my screen right below me and right next to Robin, was there on the day they arrived with her baby, who was a year old at the time. And how we entered, they had, they, they, they told me that they spent like $5,000 at Hunter College trying to uh, socialize them, trying to bring them together. And they said it was just not possible. And you will see from the pictures on the very, within an hour of when they arrived, the first two were grooming each other. And the way we did it, I, I, had, I just sold my 11 room office building in Powaki, just outside of Santa Fe. And we had one of the rooms and we put a plastic down on the floor and then we put this beautiful high mountain um, uh, hay, just this beautiful, wonderful smelling hay um, on the floor and uh, bales up against the window. So if they wanted, they could climb up and look out the windows. And we opened, brought the crates in, two crates, they'd flown in, opened the crates and you'll see what happens. You're just gonna have to wait a second because I'm gonna have to uh, just maybe show a couple of pictures while I- Okay, so Robin- I'll have I'll... this on my other computer. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I will. I'll. We'll. We'll take the easy way, and I will start the pictures, and we'll see the video at the end. So I'm going to share my screen. Ah! <laughs> so Robin, now uh, you have to enable me to share my screen. <laughs> yeah, you're co-host. It just and four people are still in the in the waiting room. Oh. Hey, this is yeah. This is so weird. I've never had this where. I, I just oh, hold on. Seen them. I, I just Robin. didn't get them all. Okay. I just I don't get this. Sorry. Just a minute. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait. 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 Share my screen. Okay. And just a moment. You shall get this here. Count a few blessings in your life while you're waiting. And now share the screen. Okay, so the first picture I have here, that's how they were at Hunter College, 16 years, 16 years. They were in these cages. There were six cages, that's only show four. It was in a really tiny room with no windows. And I, I want you all, those of you who know how to do heart hugs, do a heart hug and send out, hold out to the universe, send out the possibility that people will become more aware of how incredibly intelligent all these animals are. And that we begin to recognize the intelligence and our responsibility to treat them as most of us would like to be treated. So I, um, that's how they came. Now I just have to figure out how I, <laughs> how I forward this. I, I, I. Just a second. Ah, wait, wait. Oh my goodness. I, I think, do you have the, um, do you have the file open where the, your photographs are? Yeah, yeah, no, I just have to go to my second slide. I, and, ah. and I. Right. Sometimes, unless they're on a slide thing, it's hard to do that. Um, there, that should work if you can. You'll have to go down. Okay, another. I'm just, it's just, God, I did this before without the screen sharing, and it really works. Okay, yeah, that's how Zoom me. goes, though. <laughs> okay, I got it. There you go. No, no. That should work. Okay, so they came in these two crates sitting right in front of me, <coughs> and this was Isha. And as you can see, she was pretty sad and unhappy. And I've been just um, touching them before we reached out and touched them. I've been touching them with the wands, just stroking them. Ah! And um, then, oops. And just so you know, I do have the video mm -hmm. whenever I've, I've found no, it. I'm, I'm going to do it after, Robin. Yeah, that's fine. I'm Perfect. Just so you know. Oh, look. So here's Denise Lynch. And here are the two who walked out and saw him. 
And the, what, what they told me, be really careful because when we put them together, as they said in Hunter College, they fought. When, you know, <laughs> one of the things to understand that aggression comes from a place of fear. And this is what we wanted to do was to create an atmosphere where they were not afraid. And the reason we have masks on, we were told that we were supposed to wear masks with them. We very quickly stopped doing that because they can't see our faces. And um, so that's <laughs> Sean looking at them. And there he is. Huh. And they were very curious and very gentle. Look at the way, um, I can't tell who that is. I think that's Isha touching his foot. Isn't that interesting? So I'm hoping that's on the video. I've never seen these videos, by the way. They were in the office and I'd never seen them. Now, what happened after this, it still makes me cry to think of it. Oops, that's, sorry. They went over to the window and they stood up on the bales and they just stared. They stood behind, beside each other and just looked. It was toward evening. And they, they just looked and looked. Now think about it. 16 years they'd been in a place where they couldn't see anything. And then this is what happened. They turned and they started grooming each other. Now, what was really interesting um, is that we were told be really careful. Macaques are very dangerous. We'll be happy to send someone down from the labs up in Los Alamos, which is just a few miles from us. And we thank them very much, but said that wasn't necessary. And um, how this in, in one of the other rooms, why we, um, how this happened, this beautiful, these, these wonderful poles and things, these were built by Carol Lang. And how that happened, <laughs> I should have put in a picture of us sitting on the porch with a bunch of people, um, participants in a course at, Bitter, at um, 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 Bitterroot Ranch in Wyoming. And one day toward the end of the course, I casually said, you know, um, I am just got these six pigtailed macaques in my office. By any chance, would anyone here like to um, come and spend a month just being with them, getting, making them feel welcome, making them feel, uh, you know, get acquainted because theoretically they couldn't be put together. They were already together, actually, by the way, and there was never one fight. Um, so um, Carol Lang was there <laughs> and she had had um, a hundred horse stable uh, in Wisconsin. And Carol came out. I think she'd just gone through a situation where she had um, they dispersed it. And she came out, and <laughs> that was 1984. And Carol stayed with us 19 years. And then she went up to um, this is really important because she's extremely important to all of us who love this work. And she took on her dream job as a retiree in uh, Yellowstone Park, managing a couple of stores, but she still was getting up at er early in the morning to manage our website. So anyway, Carol built this and you can see, I'm going to show you this. That was the indoor and this is the outdoor that she built. And they could just go out. We had a, a big glass window and they could just go in and out of their apartment inside and there was a road along here and so many kids came and stopped and everybody knew the monkeys it was really a wonderful experience this is another picture of the outdoor enclosure that she built and then oh actually before i go on denise i've got you here i want to talk i want to talk about i'm going to stop the screen share a moment so we can see you. I'd like you to talk about your experience with Sean and what you remember about the monks coming. Well, I remember it was a big adventure and they were worried that they might attack us or they might spit on us, I remember, because they, and they were worried that we would have, I mean, we were wearing masks before it was fashionable, I guess, for that, but didn't last on that. Sean had a, those little bells on those little white shoes and they loved the sound and they loved his sounds because he was, he was like pre-verbal then. And I remember that they, he had a Fisher Price plastic camera that was his favorite thing. 
So he was playing with his camera and then he reached over and he handed it to him and they took the camera. So the first gesture was that, first of all, they weren't afraid of us because we were very calm and it was very peaceful and they were so curious. And you knew that they were going to be resilient. You had told me that you think, you said, I think they'll be okay. I don't think they'll hurt him or us, but we don't know. And so as soon as he shared with them, then one of them handed, I think the camera either to me or you afterwards. So we were doing, it was like a talking sticker. It was like a sharing, a sharing colorful, thing, a little plastic Fisher price and it had sound on it. But I remember that they really loved the sound. They loved us cooing to them. They loved us, our exchange, you and I, and they knew, uh, we've, I really felt that they knew that was my baby. Remember that? I really, and they were like so curious about, well, what's it like to have that baby? Like, what is that? Why does he smell that way? What is, and I don't know if monkeys see color or not. I remember we were all very colorful that day, especially his sweater, but that's kind of what I remember. And it wasn't, um, I never felt afraid and Sean certainly didn't. And I know you didn't. And they just had such a good time because they were so curious about us. And we sat on the floor. And the reason I'm lying down, <laughs> everybody who works with animals, I guess they tell you, don't ever let them get higher than you. You know, mm -hmm. I have another situation with a coyote that they could not, at the San Diego Zoo Park, they could not teach her to lead, which they wanted because she was supposed to be um, a, a um, ambassador. Uh, at the Los Angeles Zoo and for coyotes and walk around and uh, but they couldn't get her to lead and so what I did I crawled on my hands and knees I actually didn't crawl I got down and I rolled into her enclosure on the ground and so I was just lying there and she came over and this is a coyote came over and sniffed me and then she got up on a perch and they said don't let her get up on the perch of course I let her get up on the perch I wanted her to know she was in control and uh, the, Robin we have to do another zoom session with her because and that you were playing that one of the reasons I remember we got down below them and with Sean Lowe is that we wanted them to think we're playing we're not we're not we're playing with you you know, we're giving you the opportunity to play. Very quietly. Very, Very quietly. Yeah. Yeah. But so, they touched him. I remember they were touch. We were doing, you were doing touch on them. And they were touching him. <laughs> yeah, it was really beautiful. So, Robin, maybe this would be, if you think, if you saw those videos and they do show this, this would be appropriate because I have a lot. Of Let's see okay. what they show exactly. I did put them together and I'll see if this is, I don't know if there's sound, but we'll see. Uh, One of the reasons, oh, someone else. Okay, so this must be the first day they arrived. Mm, must that, this, this must have been the second group. That's Gaia. And you will see Gaia. This is the most amazing being. Oh my God. You will, you, when you see what she was and who she wasn't she first and he's the first game yeah there's the four crates they came second they wanted to see how they made out you know how we were with them when they sent the first two and look at think of this you all she's been enclosed in those cages all those years and look at her just interested i think she's the first one that i let out you see the others are still in their crates and it's interesting I don't know if I had been told she was the oldest and she's going to explore. So Alice just got back in. For some reason, Alice, you must have, this, this is the first day that the next four came and that's Mama Gaia. That's it, Robin? <laughs> this is, just a sec. I don't understand. I'm just going to stop this for a second. The share. Something's taking control of my computer. Let me, let me, I do this every day. I'll go and on. I've never had I'll this go on. problem. Let me just I'm going to go on with the pictures, Robin. Okay. Maybe I'm not. No, it's pausing it. I, I have no idea why. Go ahead on with the pictures. This is the strangest thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> okay. Okay. Minahunis. Um, let's see, where is my list here? Here we are. Otherwise, otherwise I will add this video to the end uh, when I, I'll edit this and add it to the end of the video before I make it into Vimeo. You mean that we send out to people? Yeah. I, I'm not sharing, am I? Am I, am I yes. sharing right now? Yes, you are. Okay. So, oh, oops, I already showed you that outdoor. The groomings. Uh, now, we start with the grooming. 
Now you all like this was Carol, maybe you, this was a, within a very short time that they were grooming each other like this. And I mean, think of this, you all. All experts said this couldn't happen. Wait, can you show the picture? What? So I'm not sharing. You're sharing the screen, but not the picture. You need to click onto the picture. I did. Okay, I, something's weird that's going on. Uh, just, I'm going to, wait a second. I'm going to stop the share. Again, I'm going to share again. Now, wait a minute. I think, do you see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay. It wasn't weird. I hadn't hit share. Now, I want you to think about this because this is part of the Tellington T-Touch method is this concept that our thoughts have energy. And this is, if any of you are interested in, you know, like, why do I say that? Because those of you who've known me for years, we, we didn't talk about energy because when I did the Feldenkrais training with Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais, man, that was forbidden me. You do not talk about energy because you couldn't define it. But though I, one of my favorite books of all, of all of my many favorite books is Greg Braden's, uh, the, um, um, not the biology, um, oh my God, it'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, what he says that every thought, every feeling, every emotion, and every belief we have is energy and it affects the entire universe. It's basic quantum science. And so if we hold that no way they're going to get together, they're going to be aggressive, da, 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 we have a great influence on that. But our basic principle in the work is hold the picture and the feeling and the emotion in your mind that you would ideally like to happen. And no, just put that out to the universe and know that that can happen. Hold the infinite possibility, which is a quantum science concept, infinite possibility of an ideal, safe, kind situation. And look at this. So is that I, spontaneous healing of belief is what Kathy's asking. Thank you, Ro. <laughs> thank you. Yes. One of my favorite books of many books so now i'm going to um, look on their the look on her face isn't that just like it's so wonderful to see that <laughs> look at it isn't that lovely the curiosity <laughs> of the other ones the the joy it would seem that the other one seems to be really appreciating it yeah yeah and they look good don't they <laughs> and <laughs> don't like you think don't you think also that when they're touching them, when they touch another monkey, that gave them an opportunity to finally learn about themselves because mm -hmm. they hadn't been able to have that tactile information? Absolutely. And Gaia, who's not among those, because she and Isha, two of them had free run of my office building every day while we were there. And we just had plastic runners down the hall and they would sit on the desk <laughs> And the worst thing I ever did was sometimes open drawers and look and things and then um, hit, uh, knock the phone off. <laughs> and otherwise, they'd be sitting around with us. It was just absolutely fascinating to be with them. Now, I have to figure out. <laughs> no, I can't remember how I shut this. Nope. Come on. Oh, God, you get in. Oh, there. Just have to move it. Okay. Now, this is <laughs> grooming. So, this is sitting in the window. This is in the front uh, uh, um, entry room of my building. And this kitten grew up with Gaia. You'll see. And this is Gaia. This is a mama monkey grooming. And now, yeah. Okay, now the next one. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so let me give this a go. Have any of you ever seen this? I have had people over the years, I think I've had three different people send me little videos of their cat doing tea touch on them. I mean, honest to God, you think, yeah, they're just fine. No, 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 no. They are actually like doing circle not one and a quarter but like <laughs> mm, 
I can't explain that. Maybe some of you cat people can. <laughs> and now the next one. <laughs> Look, with Gaia, with this cat. I mean, they spent hours together just hanging out. This is this is in one of the hallways in the building. I've got to move this so I can. Ah. Come on, give me red, the red button. The I red know button. I has to move it. Thank you. Okay, now the next one. Is it? <laughs> Look at Kitty with her paws crossed. This is, I think, Carol doing tea touch and Gaia together tea touching them. <laughs> and this is Gaia nursing. So this is clearly the... another cat. How many cats did you have? Well, this is a cat, and I don't remember her name, but this cat was put at our doorstep. We, we were on a highway toward Los Alamos, on the way to Los Alamos. And one day, a tiny, tiny kitten, I'm so sorry, we don't have pictures of it, came in, was dropped on the doorstep. And Carol brought it in and put it in my office. And Gaia came in like, she she came in and uh, we fed her in my office because I so enjoyed her eating in the office. So she came walking in with a little stride and saw the kitten. <gasps> oh my God, she was so excited. And the kitten goes, Pah! and just like blew up, you know, like a porcupine. And she goes, oh, and she turned like this sideways and goes, walk, 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 stop. Walk, 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 stop. And she... She walked a spiral around this kitten. It must have taken her, I don't know, at least 10 minutes. She'd stop and sit and then walk a few steps and slowly going. And after, and, and just sat very quietly. And when the kitten no longer was afraid, she picked her up and held her. Held her, just held her like this. That was this one. And this, it grew up. And sometimes, I mean, Carol, you're here. You remember sometimes the kitten, you know how they want to play. I mean, cats are get rough and they, and she'd go like, she'd close her eyes and try to push her away, but she <laughs> didn't want to push her too hard away. Amazing. Well, and it's and, a perfect, perfect example of interspecies communication and how non-human animals have a, can have a better way of diffusing reactivity than humans. You know, she backed off. She, you know, came in slowly, gave the animal, you know, kitten a chance to feel safe and then carried on. And she made that little sound, just a little, yeah. and but she wouldn't look at her. She'd turn away and go and blink her eyes. <laughs> so incredible. Oh my God. Now, um, this is guy grooming right. our mother. Yeah. <laughs> and mom would sit there and, uh, and they would just keep doing this for it was so, so beautiful to see. And it was such a nice experience to be there with them. And this is Greta. <laughs> grooming me she was not quite Gaia was very gentle Greta was not gentle she was like, <laughs> really busy <laughs> yeah, she definitely looks intense <laughs> she was cute she had that look on her face now and now look at this look on her face look at her little hands cross I mean isn't that beautiful and I was just doing tiny, tiny little circle in the quarters all around her little face. Yeah, such a lovely memory. And this is, um, <laughs> look at that. Talk about joy, eh? <laughs> yeah. Could you go back just for a second to the other one of you and the monkey, please? To that other one, thanks. Thank you. Such a peaceful feeling, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and look at 
I'm doing her ears. And for those of you who don't know, doing ear tea touch is something you could do on any animal plus a person um, to calm them if you're not feeling well. It's, it's an amazing uh, possibility of boosting your whole system and your energy level. And, and look at what she's doing on my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the like intensity of it. And this is, <laughs> she wasn't so <laughs> sure about all of this. And I just fed her. And I want to talk about the food. So she like, is eating after all, Linda. She may be pretty intense on her food. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. <laughs> she, she was a very intense being. Um, so about the food. Now, for 16 years. Uh, and this, I can't remember. Now, Carol, oh, my God, I can't remember who it was. Uh, who didn't eat. This is terrible, my God. Um, so, but one of them, I had all the lab records for 16 years, and I, I read through them for 16 years. It said, didn't eat, threw her food down. No, da, 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 never ate. And we, we went to uh, the Whole Foods Market and got the food that was like thrown out because that, that is, you know, the fruit that they, if it has any little soft spot on it, they, they can't use them. And we brought them back and they had an amazing um variety of diet every day wonderful fruits and vegetables and this i think it was pavlova i think it was this one actually um she in the beginning yeah she'd pick take a potato and take a bite and throw it throw it away and eh, take a piece of corn you'll see one of them eating corn in a minute and throw it away all the others loved all this food she just wouldn't eat and she was real thin and um so one day I asked, see if I can find it. I asked Dr. D. Blanco, who is a holistic veterinarian, to come in, to come into the office. And this is this is in the beginning before she worked with Pavlova. This is Gaia wanting to know what she's doing. <laughs> with her so kid. <laughs> with her kid, exactly. And uh, so D um, sat, Dr. Blanco sat with, I don't know, probably 20 minutes asking me questions. We were just sitting on the floor in the office and, and uh, Pavlova was just walking around. And after asking me quite a few questions, so she took a paper plate and put 10 little globules on the plate and passed it over and I thought yeah really and she came over picked one after the other up put them in her mouth walked over picked up a potato and ate the entire potato and from that day on she ate everything we gave her and one of the things I love to watch her because I remember she's taking cherries and she'd go mm -hmm. and she'd spit out the skin and the seeds and eat the pulp that's clever. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so Dr. Blanco uses this case because that cannot be placebo, right? It, whatever she gave her really worked. I so mean, did she, wait, did you give her, was it homeopathic? You say the little globules, yeah, no, globules, globules of what? Homeopathic. Homeopathic yeah. beads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beads. Yeah. Right. I don't know what they're called. Isn't that wild? Yeah. And so this is the, this is how, this is the joy of watching them eat. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it, eh? I mean, 16 years with a stupid monkey chow. No taste, no smell stuff, you know? And they were in seventh heaven. Oh. And then this, look, it's <laughs> sharing broccoli. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> and then let's see what we've got here. Oh, the starting ah. with a kitten. That's the start of it. Look at the kitten. Right. Yeah. And, and look at her. 
And and look at Gaia's gesture. Her hands are soft, her, her little mouth is up, and that's where she makes this little sounds. And so the next picture is she picked her up, you know, to hold her then. So the kitten wasn't so afraid. Look at Kitty looking at her. And it was interesting, but the, the, the kitten wasn't puffing up like the one I explained, you know, told you about the little black one. She was just looking. And then that was Gigi, by the way, her name. Look at them. <laughs> sleeping together. She was very, very patient. She still hadn't held her. I'm quite sure in that picture. And there she is. <laughs> <I'm> beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that heavenly? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just, and there she is, encouraging her to nurse. <laughs> now, Think about this, you all. I was told this Gaia was captured in the wild in, I think, Thailand when she was four years old. That means she'd never had a, a, a young one. She had been around her mother and others around young ones, but she knew exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so beautiful to, to watch her. And this is with another baby. And here, here's her kit, one of her kittens there. And this baby, I wish I could remember um, whose baby that was. Carol, if you remember, maybe you could write it in the chat. And this is them both looking at the kitten. And then, oh, no, 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 I want. What have I have this? Oh yeah, oh, look at this. I just had it in the wrong order. Look, <laughs> sharing food. Yes. So How many of you have done that with your dogs? <laughs> right. <laughs> yep, I used to share my bacon with my dog when I was like, well, my my mom's dog when I was three. Look at that, isn't that isn't that? And look at the care that. Gaia had. Remember, we were told these are very dangerous animals. So if you think that, and, and very dangerous, I want to um, say, tell you, in 1981, I completely changed my attitude about aggressive animals, horses that bit or kicked or dogs. And it was from one sentence in The Course in Miracles, which is a year-long study, and it's the statement that aggression comes from a place of fear and is a cry for help. And that completely changed my way of dealing with horses who bit or kick before I would give them one bam, you know, thunder. We don't do that anymore. We use management. We don't, we, we show them what we want and set them up in situations that they can be successful rather than punishing them for what they don't we don't want now i want to this, speak to that for a minute because that was one of the first times outside of horses that you had worked with me with an animal using that philosophy from the course of miracles and also doing what i think moshe had mentioned to you which is instead of fight or flight or freeze that you consciously think of none of those things but you think of what's in the intelligent thing i could do what's less is more what could i do could i just be aware could i just observe and that was the great test for it. And I have to say that Sean probably thinks we used him as a guinea pig. <laughs> he might need therapy. He needs animal therapy now for that. <laughs> we were showing him also as a child to, that we weren't afraid of anything, that it was to be curious because some kids might have retracted, but he was curious about it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Oops. Where was I here? Uh, now, I want to show you this because this is what happened in our office. This is uh, Pamela and Gaia and with one of her kids, say uh, Gigi, was sitting on her desk. 
And in the, in the uh, fax room, sometimes they'd open the drawers and they go through and put the pencils out and stuff. <laughs> but that's the worst they do, did. Actually, you can't see the whole picture here. <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> Gigi's wanting to play with something. And we were all totally charmed and entertaining. They never did anything stupid or... Yeah. From our perspective, yeah. stupid. <laughs> it was destructive. You mean destructive. It was destructive. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean to use that word. Something yeah. that, that wasn't, a, wasn't okay. They were really... Careful. <laughs> okay, and this... Oh, now, Carol did many, many programs with um, children coming in for, for our animal ambassador program. And she would teach them about the, the macaques. And this, I think this is perhaps a picture on the last day, because when Guy was about 30, she started to have really serious emphysema and real hard times breathing. And this group of children had come this day to sit with her and do the animal ambassador program with Carol. And Gaia came down the steps and then sat down and they sat in a circle around her, or they may have circled here. I can't remember. I, I wasn't there. Carol just told me about it. And they sang to her as she took her last breath. Yeah. And we buried her on our property. And it was just such a joy to have this amazing being in our lives. And I just wanted to show this last picture because this is kind of difficult. <laughs> this is um, Lindsay Dinkins, Eden, her son Graham, Lindsay crossed the Rainbow Bridge this year. And um, <laughs> typical interspecies <laughs> happiness. <laughs> so um, let's see, Robin what we have if your videos are going to work now well what i'm going to do is just put them in uh i i put them together i'm just going to see if it works to put them in between i what's weird is i every day i assume you never had what just happened happen so while you're doing um, that but, what i'm going to say uh, Robin, what, what i'm going to do after we get this i'm going to give people an opportunity if you would go to the bottom where it says reactions and if you'd like to say something if you just press on reactions and you'll see you can raise your hand and um if you would like to share comments or questions and i'm sure elka you're going to have things to share with us um karen i see your tears oh me too <laughs> let me just see if this is going to work uh so this is a uh, uh the, the first part of the of day one up started so just a second uh let's see if this Let's try sharing this. See if this is going to work. Oh, there's a part of time next to you. What does it do? You may have to adjust it because it is for the smaller monkeys. Can it do anything with it? We were experimenting with, uh, you know, what we could do for, um, for a social adjustment. So you're just giving them some some new experiences with things. Jason, it's a nice idea. Oh, and I got something else for them in the car. Oh my gosh, it's really crazy. Oh, the window outside. You know what? This is really a long video. I missed it at the time, so we won't be able to show all of it. Maybe that's the problem. You you film it. Well, Robin, maybe you can send it out, you know, with the the replay. If anybody, uh, I, I will put it on maybe an unlisted YouTube or something because it's because uh, this is actually really really long. But I'm going to see if I can find one with a kitten um, because the kitten is really sweet. That's why it took so long to download. Okay, let's try this. Um. While you're doing that, I'm just seeing hi, Adrian. I'm just seeing people I didn't have a chance to say hi to before. Okay, let's try this. So this was one of the kittens. This must have been the. Um,
Oh, that's a little black one. That's the one that came in at four weeks. Ouch. <laughs> and did Carol just say, ouch? I think she must have chewed a little hard. <laughs> Well, and kittens can be pretty rough with their nails too. So, I mean, and she's- They were rough. I wish we had showed the picture where she'd go, and they'd be clawing and wanting to play with her and she would close her eyes and put her hands up to push them away. A little while ago, a guy walked up to the chair where Sage was just waking from a nap, reached up, took him behind the ear around the neck, <laughs> pulled him off of the chair and carried him close to her belly for about four or five feet and then allowed them to suckle. So did she create any milk or was it just um, the... Not that we know of. Yeah, that was a question. I don't think so. I mean, it could have happened. I can't believe how fat she was. I want to get on film too when Guy and Gigi, I mean, when uh, Gigi and Sage are playing. Mm -hmm. And the Guy was just talking to and just started Sage. describing she what's happening. Referee. And she bit. Gigi's tail because Gigi wouldn't let go. <laughs> Punishing her. I wonder what that. <laughs> oh, interesting. That kitten has the most standy up coat. So it's like. I see. Well, I think she's still nervous. That's what I would say. I would say. <laughs> the question was was the kitty a taxic? I don't think there was anything are, oh, wrong God, with the cat. Uh, no? This is the people from Mac Warehouse. Here, I'm just going to take off this. You can't hear the sound well enough, I don't think. But anyway, it's it's pretty sweet. The, um, you can hear the sound actually really well. Oh, you can? Yep. Great. So I would like to, uh, do you have another one or is that it? This oh, is, it was just a little block thing. It was just a little, I don't know what happened. Great. It was, this is pretty old video. So one of the questions is whether they were with you till they, um, until they died. Yeah, they ended up, they went to a primate mm -hmm. rescue. Oh, good question. Yeah, After Gaia died, uh, we found, Carol found a really good place for them. Wonderful. Area. I can't remember where it was, somewhere in Texas. Ooh. I think this hot weather is making them sleep. So they're, they're, they're quite, they're, the videos are actually quite long. But I'll actually share a link for them. They're, um, they're in the library, but I'll, I can share a link for people um, if you, if you want to watch them. It's just quite an extraordinary demonstration of, of really interspecies communication. And, um, and you know, and being safe, how animals can can really figure out how to how to kind of reduce the the concern with um, the other about other beings, which is pretty amazing. And amazing intelligence. I mean, the fact that you are our basic philosophy is you know, if you want to change your animal, you have to change your mind. You have to hold up. You it's necessary to hold the picture of what you want rather than what you don't want, which is what most of us do if we're not consciously realizing that. And the fact that we had all these years with these wonderful beings and they had such an amazing life. And I would um, I would like to, if anybody has, um, Marnie, you said that I, I don't remember your involvement. You must have been because certainly Lindsay was there frequently. What what are your memories? Or anybody else who may have visited us with them? Marty, you might have been there too. There we go. I um I came to New Mexico after getting divorced and lived with uh in Linda's house and uh went every day to work with the monkeys. And they would be wandering around the office and coming in and, you know, just visiting. And, and I'm struck by how normal it all seemed. <laughs> I was just uh, chapter two of my life or three or four. And it was just fascinating. I mean, I just took, when I look at it now, it seems like I just took it all way too for granted. It just 
It was so magic. And I would come home from a trip late at night and it seems to me like the monkeys had free range at night too, because I would come in to check my mail and it was kind of, you know, you never knew when one of them was gonna kind of come up and, you know, talk to your leg a little bit with their hand. <laughs> No, usually they were in their condo at night, so it must have oh. just been. Maybe it was Carol Lang that was grabbing my leg. I don't know. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> so how, how long were the, did the macaques live with you? Do you remember? How long were they with us? Yeah, yeah. I don't have any idea. Quite a few years. Yeah. Uh, until yeah they, they'd died. been there two years before I got there. Yeah. And she was with, you know, after she left, you know, it was time to find a bigger place. We wanted a bigger place for them. That was the thing that we managed to get. Is the woman you talked to living in Santa Fe, New Mexico? Marty Bennett used to, but no longer. She's now in Florida, close to where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alice, I wish she was there <laughs> for you. Yeah. Um, Elka, anything that you'd like to share from your experience? What I, I want us all to think about here is the amazing intelligence we're seeing here. And this, you've all been, I'm sure, totally blown away by all the wonderful interspecies connections that we see on YouTube. It's so, uh, just makes your heart sing to see all of the incredible. And I, we got a chance to uh, be with uh, one of the chimps that you see pictures of that uh, adopted a hound dog. Some of you have seen those pictures and, and just took the dog by the hand, I mean, <laughs> by the collar and, and would hold him. I mean, it was amazing. And, and do you all remember, I, I, it's like it's in my brain permanently, the amazing giant tortoise who adopted the, the young hippo at the, during the tsunami. That was just incredible. And the way the hippo would just lay her head across the front legs of the big tortoise. You know, the, so the other thing, more. the other thing it shows though is also resilience of how resilient, how resilient they were after, you know, kind of being in the situation they were. And then when they came out of it, it was just like, like this, the joy of curiosity of discovery. And, um, and, and I, I think that resilience is something that, you know, everyone can learn from really, because um, life isn't always as we would like it to be. And so interesting anyway, uh, Carol um, Johnson has her hand up. You can unmute yeah. yourself. Hi, Carol, like your smile. <laughs> Hi, Linda. I was just going to add, you mentioned um, the hippo and the um, tortoise, and that's Owen and Mazee, and it was down in Africa, and um, there is an Englishman who wrote three children's books full of photographs oh. of these two and their relationship, and he wrote, he wrote them for his daughter, but ended up publishing them, nice. um, but it's Owen and Mazee, M-Z- E, e I think it's spelled. Oh, cool. Nice. So thank you for bringing that up. That was a wonderful story. <laughs> and I was thinking that that, um, that was something that I saw during the tsunami in Indonesia. And in, in, uh, where was it? Where was the tsunami? I can't even I, remember now. The big one. Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. 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 Well, Could this, these two were in Africa. And, yeah, and I, was, there was a... Um, there was a huge storm or something in the hippo, the baby hippo, um, Owen was left on a sandbar and, um, and all the rest of them were washed down, I don't know, wherever. And um, the, um, the villagers were trying to figure out a way to rescue him and so on and so forth. And luckily there was a sanctuary a few hours away and they ended up getting him into the back of a truck and then yeah, delivering them. Beautiful. So Alice, do, is your hand up? Do, would you like to say something? I can't, I can't tell. Um, so I Elka- I just wanted I to know where you're moving in Florida. 
Oh, well, I hope we're going to Jupiter Farms, which is a two acre, one and two acre properties just uh, north of Palm Beach. It's about seven miles inland. It was the ranch of, uh, oh God, I always have such, Reynolds, Burt Reynolds. And um, it's where horses have the right of way. <laughs> And you, can, it's it's a trail riding community. It's not a show community, so I'm really excited. And horses have the right of way in the my, whole. My, my 14 year old <laughs> granddaughter just had another her second, uh, uh, what's it called? Where she's learning how to guide a horse by just her movements. Oh, cool! Very nice, Alice. Have you turned 100 yet? I'm 100 and a half. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. And totally, <laughs> and totally lonesome. I have, I got on originally, and then my daughter, one of my daughters had an emergency. I got off, and now my other daughter is watching what she can or listening to you. And oh, she, great. Wants to, she wants to get trained. Oh, <laughs> well, Kirsten's in Santa Fe. And Elka, I would love to have you share one of your poignant experiences that you know, that shows the amazing intelligence of animals. Linda, sorry, can I just ask you, you, you have a time limit here, so I just want to keep you, is that not true? Thank or you? you know what, Robin, you're right. I'm sorry, because we, we've been an hour and we promised, I promised Robin we'd get off. No, 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 time. no, no. I just thought it was for, I thought it was because of your house. Uh, the I thought it was because of the showings of your house. Not today. Not okay, now. okay. No, no worries. That, that's. That's why I thought we had to do the time the way we did. So anyway, sorry, carry on. So Elka, one experience that comes to your mind. Yeah, you're, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, now can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. So I have so many experiences that it's hard for me to, to tell you one specific story because as I work with elephants so long and I work with elephants in different parts of the world and then I work constantly at the Oakland Zoo, um, <laughs> it is really important where your heart is, where you come from, what you so expect, your thoughts and the response you get in that way and the, the cross-basis connection, which I feel all the time. The only thing is in the captivity situation, a zoo is, I struggle a lot of times at the zoo while, while, where there is interference by the keepers who are in a different place. Mm. So I don't always get what I would like to receive, but I do have it with the, with the reptiles more so than with the elephants at that uh, facility. And so I have wonderful experiences with the tortoises because I work with this giant Aldabra tortoises. And they respond so well. They recognize me when I come and I have two males. They are fighting for my attention. So I have work <laughs> on one and they stretch everything out and I touch their soft parts of their body and their necks. And I work a lot around the eyelids. And I tell you, they're just wait for that to, because this lower part goes up. So I stroke that and stroke that. And sometimes they make these soothing sounds or even deep sounds of, Oh, oh, I mean, so touching. It brings me to tears when I experience this. And these two males, particularly, they're close friends. And they're, one wants the same thing. So I have to do my both of my hands at the same time to satisfy them. Because one will push the other out of the way. So, so it's just so endearing, you know. Yeah. The females... Thank you so much. <laughs> On the other hand, are very different, Linda. The females are really, I see the male and females uh, differences. It's almost like the humans. The females are just more timid. They take a little more time and then they blossom and open up like a flower. It's really yeah. beautiful. <laughs> so. so I'd like to ask you, Marty, do you ever, do you ever get affection in llamas? Or alpacas? Well, well, they they are affectionate, but you have to learn what affection means from them. 
You know, the fact that they will stand close to you, for example, is a really big compliment. Yeah. But it's uh, it's not the same as with a dog, for example. Yeah, and I, I, I actually affection isn't the right word. I guess uh, the uh, a, a sign that they enjoy being with you. Rather, is it like a int of interest or a job? I mean, you you know my experience with is very limited with the uh, uh, llamas, and I just wondered. Well, I, um, I, I think the biggest compliment that they can pay you, certainly in my experience, since I visit so many different people's farms, is if they will stand within what they know is arm's length of you, because so many llamas and alpacas have been always mm. cornered and grabbed around the neck. And so if you yep. can get across to them that you're not going to grab them somehow, you know, like it's not my intention, I would never do that. Yeah. Um, then they'll come and stand right next to you. And that is, you know, that's what makes my heart sing when when I can do that and their owners whom they've lived with for years and years can't stand as close to them as I do, or that the animals won't stand as close to them as they do with me. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about that is when you are in a place of heart coherence, you develop, you uh, uh, um, activate trust in the animal. And it has to do with the mirror neurons when we're feeling grounded and calm and in heart coherence what happens is that they want to be with us. Actually, HeartMath Institute has done a study showing this difference. Mm -hmm. And if, as you say, Marty, the person is knowing, thinking they have to grab them or you know, restrain them, they feel that and they don't want to be with you. It's so interesting. Well, I've really um, enjoyed, I, I wonder if anyone has any questions that you'd like to ask at this point and then... And while you're thinking, I see you, um, Amanda Pretty is here with us. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if she is because there's, it's. I it's, know it because she. <laughs> no, her name is on so many. I don't understand how this happened either. This is the weirdest <laughs> call because her, her name is, and my name is on more than one person too. So I've never had this in Zoom, but so uh, Mandy is not with us. So I know saying. that, but the person that, is, that, that looks like she's Mandy, I wonder if you, Jane, have any, some, something you would like to share, something you've seen in the horse world that makes your heart sing, and a, a, a trust. You see, all of those who don't know the work so well, the second T in T-Touch stands for trust. And Jane Stewart, who's right now under Amanda's name. Well, so are um, four other people, just so you know. <laughs> um, not, not on my screen. You haven't moved it. <laughs> um, am, I, am I unmuted? Am I yes. unmuted? Yeah. Yes, but it shows you muted. This is so weird. <laughs> I'm on my phone. To, get, okay. to be able to hear you, I had to get on my phone. Um, okay. So I want to introduce you all to Jane Stewart. And I, excuse me, Marty, I didn't introduce Marty McGee or Elka Register because these are people who have been known of T-Touch for a long time. And Marty has been an instructor for years. And, and Jane has been with us since the beginning of time, I think, and one of the amazing <laughs> horse trainers in the T-Touch world and, and the general world. You, you know, trust, trust is the bottom line. It's the bottom line. The, the horse that I learned the most from had, uh, I was his fifth owner and he was four years old. Man. Touching him was not easy. You know, he, the first, and you worked with him once years ago, also Linda, after, long after I've had him. Uh, but just to take my hand and do touches from his pole to his withers. That was a big deal. And it took more than a month to do that. And he literally, if I got past his withers, would reach around and take a hold of my shirt. He didn't bite me. He just held my shirt and he looked at me. And when I stopped, he spit my shirt out. So it was that kind of trust and what he needed to be able to say was no, I'm not comfortable. And that's the lesson he taught me was I had to listen to him and the way I had trust because of that 
was because I did listen to him. And then that opened the door. It's that quality of trust, isn't it? Yeah. So and Linda, that comes from listening to the animals. Yes, Robin. Uh, Betsy has her hand up, so. Oh, thank you. Oh yeah, I see you now, Betsy. And then Marty. Yeah. Hi, I just wanna say hello to everyone. Haven't seen everyone in, in a while, but um, I just really wanted to um, thank you, um, Linda and Carol and um, everyone who really provided a new life for the macaques. Um, after I left you all from New Mexico, I spent um, years working with primates. And so it, uh, it just means the world to me that um, the time and the gift that you gave them for them to just be able to be the beings that, that they are. So thank you for, for that. It was our great pleasure to do so. Yeah. And one of the things I'd like to say about that, you know, we only work with those six macaques, but when you remember and recognize that you are one with the all that is, and we hold that vision, we're not just acknowledging the those beings and their intelligence, but all beings. And if you just expand your knowing beyond yourself and realize that any deed that we do recognizing and gaining, giving trust uh, makes a difference on the planet. Yeah, and Marty. You had your, 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 your. your yeah, she, she just unmuting herself, that's all. <clears throat> can you see can, that? Just a no, second, can you see just, just a second. There, I just made it bigger. Oh yeah, look at that. Was it first time? Was it the first time she was at your house? That was. I'll tell them my story, and you tell them my <laughs> side of it. So, I was at okay. Cornell, Cornell University giving a <laughs> demonstration with the horse, and this beautiful woman who was as tall as an Amazon woman <laughs> came up. And said to me, well, Mrs. Tellington Jones, it's nice that you can touch the ears of a horse, but you certainly couldn't touch my llama's ears. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's interesting. I'd never worked on a llama at that, a llama, a llama at that point. And um, so she invited me home with her. And I was intrigued by this wonderful woman, as I am till today. And um, I went home with her. And so tell them what happened. <laughs> well... Can, am I am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We can hear you. yeah. So uh, Linda was. We had made arrangements about this in advance, and I I we had we had. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I called you up on the phone to find out, and you were home and said you'd come stay at my house. That's. <laughs> but anyway, I I was amazed at watching Linda work with horses, and I had horses as a kid, so I uh, I was. Um, just amazed by all of that, but none of it would work on llamas and llamas then. I just knew it. And so Linda gets in my car and uh, I start going on and on about, you know, how amazing it was to see it with the horses, but that it wouldn't work with llamas. And she went promptly to sleep. <laughs> and that is, that is something that I have done so many times since then. When if somebody picks me up from the airport and starts to tell me what I know or don't know about llamas and alpacas, I'm just like. <sighs> <laughs> and then the next morning, Linda goes out to the barn and does all these things with my llamas that I never dreamt of doing with them in five years of having them, touching their mouths and their lips. And so I said, OK, I have to know everything that Linda knows, um, preferably within a two week time period. <laughs> and um stopped everything I was doing and um but I had heard and I saw how kind of odd Linda's whole realm was and somebody told me that I should call this woman Robin Hood and because I wanted to go to Australia but I was worried that I was gonna have to roll around in the desert naked and the I didn't know with our group so, you mean. yeah so I called Robin up and I said listen I'm really intrigued with this work Robin but I'm worried about this woman Linda Tellington Jones and do you think it'll be safe if I go to Australia with her? And Robin said, oh yeah, I think so. 
So I did, and I didn't find out until Robin arrived in Australia that they were sisters. <laughs> the whole thing was I, just I'll never forget magic. that. Actually, I'll never forget you calling me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Wow. Anyway, I want the, the Lama Tea Touch, for those of you who know the various names <laughs> that we give the, the tea touches, came from Marty's stable of, of, of a herd of, of llamas, pack or whatever. So uh, when I went to touch the ears, which you said you couldn't do, um, I started from the side and then I went from the front and I took the back of my hand. And I just went back like that over the ear. And that's how the llama touch came to be the back of our hand. So if you want to approach an animal with, without threatening them and you use the, just the soft back of your hand in any way, um, the energy, it's the intention, they, they know you cannot grab them with the back of your hand. And it really works. So Marty McGee, thank you. And, <laughs> Thank you all. I think that it's time to bring this adventure to a close. And it's a real pleasure to be with you all. And uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, we have this wonderful, it's called the Tellington Tea Touch community. And for $9.95 a month, you can be part of these. We, we, Robin and Mandy, Robin has been doing these amazing interviews uh, almost every week with people. And I do them every once in a while also, and all kinds of questions and answers. And there's so, and you, we have a library of, of books and videos and webinars that that's part of that. And Robin has also, with Mandy, developed those of you who would like to learn something about the work and actually do an online course, you can do that now. And just go to learn.ttouch.ca for Canada. And look at what we're offering for dogs and horses and kitties. And if any of you are interested for humans, I've been now teaching online for humans for the last three years and Tea Touch for self-care. And it is amazing what you can do to enhance your own sense of well-being and reduce your stress and um, the common things that we have that go on with our bodies. So, so thank you. Linda, uh, so Sylvia has a, a question, has her hand up. So we'll just take that question Sylvia. and then we'll end, I think. Okay, I'll be brief. Linda, when I was at the 2012 celebration in Santa Fe, and can you hear me? Yes. Uh, and I had, Mandy didn't always greet people very well, but one of the people that worked the desk had wanted to see her. And finally, he said, I'm not going to be here when you check out. Can I see Mandy? And he knelt down. She went to him. And before I could react, he looked at her and said, can I have a kiss? And her head flicked up and she kissed him. And it was like just she, I don't know, she sensed something. I mean, I, I would not advise that. But no. he went down on her level. And before I could react, he said that. And she looked at him and flicked her head up and her little tongue went out <laughs> unbelievable this is her touch. i don't know if he still works there but i always thought he was so good i wonder who it was interesting and i just know his name was dennis and you know that's many years ago he probably i was always going to write and ask try to contact him but i didn't thank you thank you and this is her dog this is her wonderful dog every year sylvia makes um a calendar for me and i keep this I use this calendar every day. That's Mandy. <laughs> and blessings on all of your dogs and cats and horses and birds and all of the small ones who grace your lives. Let's just end with a heart hug. This is where we put one hand over the other, just softly, one over the other on your chest, which is your heart chakra. And imagine the face of a clock. And the reason we take that imagine clock off the wall and put it here, we put the numbers on it, six toward the ground, uh, nine toward the right shoulder, 12 toward the chin, and three toward the left shoulder. And we imagine, because when we imagine, we activate our right brain. And when we put the numbers on, we activate our left brain. 
And why is that important in this day and age? Because when we imagine anything and we activate that right brain, we're activating our creativity, our feeling, which we really need in this time of COVID, our intuition and our compassion. And the numbers are so important because the numbers activate our logical brain, anything to do with method, which we have a specific way of doing it, and the numbers. And so we're getting this constant activation of both hemispheres. And when we do fear as gently as you can touch your skin, as, and it's a tiny circle because it's just a little tiny movement of starting at six, and we're going to go first to the right. If you want to go the other way, do it because both ways work, but I'm going to just to make it easy, go to six up to nine, 12, three, six, nine. Take a nice deep breath and smile and think of something for which you are very grateful. And then do another one. And you move this tissue as lightly as you can. One circle and a quarter. Let's try the other way. Start at six and go around like a little arc to three, 12, nine, six, three. Deep breath and smile. And what that does is that can put you measurably in a state of heart coherence when your forebrain is activated. And that is the greatest state for, it's a parasympathetic and it's the greatest state for learning and for being in an ideal state for healing. And when you go to work with your animals, if you just do this, like, like a few moments, half a, half a minute, in whichever direction you prefer, and you give a little smile, because that activates the serotonin by thinking of something for which you're grateful. And this very light contact activates the oxytocin, which is that trust hormone. The lighter, the better just enough to move that skin lightly. And that puts us in that quiet state of ideal function from which we can learn. And as I say, be in a state of hmm, ideal function. Robin, thank you for suggesting this. It was really fun. And thank you all for being here. And uh, we will send out a recording for those of you who'd like to see these macaques again and I just want to thank Carol Lang for all the pictures that she took all the years and all the records that she kept in all the amazing and beautiful work she did with these macaques. Blessings and aloha and go online go to learn.ttouch.ca and if any of you are interested in horses I am doing a three Saturday horse online course that starts next Saturday still have a few places for either auditors or um, horses participants. Blessings. Aloha. We'll stop the recording.